Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to set spacing constraints or spacing rules inside the Cadence PCB tools. So I've got a placed PCB here um, and I want to go and set some, some rule, rule sets based on maybe a manufacturing uh, rule from the PCB fabricator to tell me what my tracking gaps are and I want to set some spacing rules. For this we would use Constraint Manager. So Constraint Manager can be launched from within the schematic tools uh, and you can actually set the rules and get that to drive the PCB. Um, in this example we're just going to be doing this in the PCB end so we're just going to do it at the back end of the, of the flow, show it in PCB editor. So we can either launch Constraint Manager from a command line, uh, we can assign a shortcut key, we can use effectively the icon and you'll see there's CMGR for Constraint Manager or I can use the Setup and Constraints option. This would launch Constraint Manager. So I've effectively got seven worksheets um, and there are other videos showing you the different worksheets. And then uh, inside the spacing worksheet we've got five main areas and this is what we're going to concentrate on today. So I've got a spacing constraint set all layers which is effectively where we, we would define any rule sets. We've got a net all layers which effectively where the rule sets would be applied. So you can see I've got some, some different net classes here. I've got um, some differential pairs and I've got some individual net objects. We can create all of these type of objects inside uh, Constraint Manager here. We can also do this in the front end tools as well. There's also a net class to class functionality which is allows us to, um, to set rules between different net classes. Um, I'll come talk about this a little bit more um, in this video. There's a region based area where we can set rules by area. So effectively I want my, my line to line, my pin to pin gaps to be defined um, maybe slightly smaller or slightly larger in a specific area of the PCB like a BGA or a flexi rigid um, and you can define the rules here in the region. There is a video on the on the Parsi CDA YouTube channel that shows this. The interlayer spacing option allows you to set um, mask to mask rules or copper to copper rules specifically for flexi rigids. Um, you might have some specific type of rules and there's another video going through this type of functionality as well. So if we go to the spacing constraints at all layers, um, this is where the rules are. So you normally have a default rule. I've also got, also got a BGA space rule here with the different values set. These are based on line to all, through pin to all, SMD pin to all. If we double click the, the column header, line two, it would then expand these out. So we can set specific line to line, line to through pin, line to SMD pin, test pin through via, BB via, test via, shape and bond finger if you specifically wanted to. to. In general, a lot of people um, tend to have the line to all, the through pin to all. So all of these values are set to the same. So by having this um, expandable, it can simplify what Constraint Manager looks like. So you've only got a few cells that you need to modify and visualize rather than having to look at all the individual um, rows and columns for each rule. To change the value, we literally just drag select um, the cells one of them changes in highlight, I can then go and specify the value. So I've got a point two rule now set for my default rule. That will be used on all the different rules that I have. Um, we can obviously disband the whole as well and, and make the whole group bigger and smaller. The whole rule tends to get used when, um, if you're using um, unconnected internal pads, it would then revert to the whole rule, okay? So let's go and make a spacing C-set rule. So we'll do a right mouse button, create a spacing C-set. In this example, I'm gonna call it 0.5 millimeter gap. And then I can then just drag select the, the columns that I'm interested in, and we'll specify this as 0.5. We'll make another rule. So we'll do a right mouse button, create spacing C-set. We'll call this one millimeter gap. And again, I'll just drag select the cells, um, specify these to be one. I've now got some different rule sets. Um, the rule sets themselves, obviously if I um, hit the, the arrow next to the words or the name, they're split into obviously conductors and planes. So if I, this is driven by the cross section of PCB editor. So I've got two plane layers and four um, conductor layers. You can specify different values for these. So for example, let's just make maybe the top 0.3 and we'll make the bottom uh, 0.3. What you'll notice now is the rule set itself actually splits the individual values out so you can see all the different values per layer if you wanted to define your constraints like this. In this example, I'm just going to leave them as 0.2 just to simplify the constraint that I'm doing. But it has the capability to do that if you want. So once I've got my rule sets defined, I then want to start to apply these to nets. So we go to the net-based objects. 
and I can apply these rules to a class. I can apply these rules to, so if I, let's just pick, um, let's pick the RF for example. I hit the drop down next to the rule set name and I see a list of all the different names that I have available to me, my rule sets. Um, I can specify a 0.5 rule and then that would then drive effectively my net class and all the objects beneath that net class with that rule. Okay. In general though, a lot of people tend to just have um, default manufacturing rules driven from uh, the PCB fabricator to what they would have for their, their gaps in a design. Where a lot of people tend to spend specified different rules, and this isn't everybody, some people do this um, individually, people do them differently on a net by net basis, other people do them as groups of nets. So if we go to the class to classes, I can actually start to drive rules between my different classes of nets. So I can either select a, a specific class and do a right mouse button create a class to class rule, that would then bring up all the different net classes. What I can do here is either do these individually, so if I had a specific rule from address to byte lane, or address to DDR address, or address to Steve, for example, I could effectively select that and it would then create an object for me to apply a different rule set. Or I can actually do these all in one, so I can shift select this first column, shift select the next column, and then hit apply. And I then get effectively a matrix where I can specify, so from the address class to the address class, I can say this is gonna use a default rule, but the address to the byte lane, I'm going to say it's going to be um, a millimeter to this one's going to be a millimeter to this address half a millimeter this one's a millimeter this one can use um, a millimeter as well so you can very very specifically set up a matrix to do, drive all the different rules this can be really useful in uh, power supply designs where you've got high power and low power or you've got some uh, different different technologies of designs where you can specify different rule sets between them and you'll see it populates the matrix all in one go there's also a CSET assignment matrix, which actually gives you a slightly different visualization of this. So you can actually come in and just pick the rule set that you wanted to drive here from byte lane to power group, for example. The region rules, obviously rules by area. You can then pick a specific region rule that you want to use. So maybe for my flexes, I want to go to a slightly bigger gap. And so I can specify a different rule here. And the interlayer spacing, as I said, is covered in a different rule. But you'll see how flexible it is to be able to drive constraints. So the other thing to think about is obviously on a lot of these examples, um, you can actually add a net override. So if you've only got a small board, you don't want to create lots and lots of rules. I can come in and say, well, this specific net here is going to be 0.4 line to line. This one's going to be, um, let's, let's specify this one to be 0.5. So you can add overrides on a net by net basis if you want to. Um, the biggest disadvantage of doing this is obviously you've got to then change all of these if you wanted to make a change you've got to change them all individually again whereas if you use the, the kind of the rule set and apply a rule set that then gets driven through so um, it might be worthwhile considering maybe um, actually defining a set of rules you can obviously then do things like export these rules out so we can do an export technology file or a, an electrical uh, a, we want to do a constraints or a technology file here export these out and then these can be then be imported into another design and you're then using a standard set of rules as you keep going.